very special guest this week on Pop Goes the Country. First of all, there's Ronnie McDowell. And there's pretty little old Miss Helen Cornelius. And standing next to her is from Nashville on the road. Here's Jim Ed Brown. I'm delighted to have Jim Ed Brown and Helen Cornelius on this program, and I want to show you an award they won. This award in the past has been won by such people as Porter Wagner and Dolly Parton, by Conway Twitty and Loretta Lynn. But in 1977, the Country Music Association chose Jim Ed Brown and Helen Cornelius as the Outstanding Duo of the Year, and they won this award. Uh, they were recipients on a great night in Nashville, and I want to congratulate you on this program. Thank you. I think that's okay. terrific. Okay. Let's hear it, audience. Let me say thank you. You uh, you make pretty good singing duo. Thank you. But I was in I was on the road a while back, and it's difficult to convince people that you aren't married or aren't in love with each other at least. We don't try. We just kid around and let them think what they want to think. <laughs> oh, you don't try to dispel the rumors? No, no, we do. Yes, but I mean, we don't argue with them when they they make up their mind. It doesn't do any good to argue. You mean you could tell them the truth and they wouldn't believe you? No. Now, uh, Lewis happens to be here, right? and that's Helen's husband, and Becky is an outstanding dance instructor in Nashville, a very pretty lady, and she's Mrs. Jim Ed Brown. And there go the rumors, <laughs> at, least, at least for this five minutes. Jim Ed, I'm particularly happy to have you on the program because there's something special I want to do with you a little later on. All right. Okay. It's nice to be here, Ralph. I appreciate it. Uh, Nashville on the road. See, we, uh, <coughs> Jerry Clower said that it was all right for just a little while if I come to say hello to you. Oh, do your impression, impression of Jerry Clower. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Shoot this thing. Uh, huh? uh, Conrad, our engineer, does a tremendous job of that. Conrad, would you like, can Conrad do that? Shoot this thing? Shoot that thing, yes. <gasps> <laughs> all right. <laughs> oh, Jerry will love you for that. Yes, now we're going to go to our next guest, and he's a young man from Portland, Tennessee, and he first scored with a tribute to Elvis Presley called The King Is Gone. Followed that with a song that he is about to sing on this show, another hit. So would you welcome Ronnie McDowell. <laughs> I love you, I love you, I love you. These are such simple words. 
That's terrific. Thank you very much. I was a very moving performance by our guest, Ronnie McDowell. Jim Ed Brown brought his guitar over here at, at my insistence. I thought we would do uh, something that... And by the time we finish with it, you may want me to throw it away. <laughs> I, I think it is interesting, Jim Ed, that you recorded a number of tunes and, and buried these songs, so to speak, in LPs. And they later became big hits by other people, like... You were the first person to ever do the, the song Love in the Hot Afternoon, as I right. recall. Whenever the, the writers brought it to me, uh, I loved the song. But now, Ralph, understand that music changes, you know, and people change. And uh, we are beginning, you know, we, the longer we go, the more we accept, you know, such as uh, the Love in the Hot Afternoon. You think that was a little risque? Well, I didn't. But when it got to New York, uh, RCA thought that it might I be. See. But I love the song. It became and I still a big hit for Gene Watson. Yes, it did. However, I would like to hear you sing a little bit of it. Mm. From somewhere outside, I hear the street vendors cry, Billy Gumbo. Billy Gumbo. That's a tune that uh, Don Williams had recently. But I remember you recorded this song a long time ago. I love this song. Ever since uh, whenever I first heard it, actually, uh, Harry Belafonte recorded this song oh, many, many years ago. It's one of the first ones that he ever did. I am just a country boy. Money have I none, but I've got silver. In the stars and gold and the morning sun, and so on. Then, uh, that's very nice. 
<laughs> there was a song that I think just about everybody in Nashville recorded at one time or another that later became a big hit for Freddie Fender. Right. And you, you also buried this in an old album. Mm -hmm. Ben Peters wrote it. Yes, one of his pretty songs. I know it. You going to sing a little bit of that for me? Tell me what it is. Before the next teardrop <laughs> falls. <laughs> We're, you all, forget? <laughs> We're all going to cry. If he brings you happiness, then I wish you both the best. It's your happiness that matters most of all. But if he ever breaks your heart, if the teardrops ever start, I'll be there before the next teardrop falls. Well, Jim Ed, even though you didn't hit with them, I think you do them beautifully. Let's hear it for Jim Ed Brown. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Now then, let's meet Ronnie McDowell, who uh, first came to your attention, I'm sure, through the song, The King is Gone. Right. Your tribute to Elvis Presley. Did you ever meet Elvis? No, sir, I never did. I, I never even got to see him perform. But you must have grown up listening to his records. I sure did. Uh, you know, The King is Gone, you know, it says, uh, I was barely six years old, you know, and every bit of that, you know, was true. It was all from the heart. You mean when he, he started his singing career, you were six? Yes, sir. How many records did you sell on The King Is Gone? It's a little over three million worldwide. Mercy. And you became an overnight star, didn't you? Well, sir, I've been in the music business for 14 years. So you weren't an overnight star. No, sir. I know you told me you used to sing in the nightclubs around Nashville for a I long sure time. sure did. Well, I wish you well as you go along through life, and I wish you many hits, Ronnie. Thank you, sir. Now we're going to ease back over our shoulder. And we're going to enjoy a singing performance by a little gal who has so much in her voice. Jerry Reed said of her, she's probably one of the best girl singers in Nashville. You're going to see why right now as we introduce once again Helen Cornelius. You smile across the room. I couldn't keep my eyes from making eyes at you. And the way you held me through each slow dance that they played has only brought me closer to what I'm about to say. What you do? What you 
Helen, if you will, join me, and let's do a song that is one of my favorite songs, all right? I'll never be free. Each time we hold somebody new, my arms grow cold, aching for you. No one can take your place, darling, in my embrace, I'll never be free. No other kiss puts out the fire Though I may try and try No one can satisfy This longing in me mm, I'll never be free From your smile so tender The sweet surrender in your eyes I gave to you made me a slave to you I'll never be free I'll never be free I don't think Music City USA has ever produced any nicer sounds than the harmonious sounds made by Jim Ed Brown yeah. and Helen Cornelius. Mm -hmm. They weren't on our show last okay. year, or last season, so I want to do a little catching up, if I could. We'd love to. And pick up some of the tunes we might have missed. Could we do that, Jim Ed? Well, we love to sing, so all you've got to do is just let us know what you'd like How to about hear. a little bit of saying hello? All right. Saying hello, saying I love you, saying goodbye. Have my share of strangers turn into lovers, then turn back to strangers again. Oh, I lost them in a crowd of sad passers by. Saying hello, saying I love you, saying goodbye. Saying hello, saying I love you, saying goodbye. That's nice. Then there's another tune I missed having on the show last season. Another one of your big hits, Born Believer. I'm a born believer, and I believe in you. Let self-pity drag you down You're my man And that's enough I'll turn your hopes and attitudes around Cause I'm a born believer And I believe in you any day Yeah, I'm a born believer And I believe we're gonna find a way fans would be very disappointed if we didn't put about a dab and a half of the first hit into the show. 
I'd be disappointed if they didn't want to hear it. Before I conclude all this, I want to bring Ronnie McDowell in. And uh, Ronnie, I want to certainly thank you for your appearance on our program this week. Thank you. And uh, Helen, you were simply marvelous. Thank you. And Jim Ed, you weren't bad yourself. <laughs> I thank you, sir. That's our show this week, my friends. We thank you for looking in at Pop Goes the Country. For Ronnie McDowell, Jim Ed Brown, Helen Cornelius, this is Ralph Emery saying so long and thanks for watching.